So today we have an OCHEM question of the day and it's asking which technique would be the best in identifying the two molecules from each other? So the first thing we want to notice is uh, we want to define what each of these four are, uh, what each of these four experiments do. Um, so we'll start off with mass spec. Um, so mass spec identifies things by molecular weight. Uh, so something that has a very high molecular weight um, will be separate uh, completely from something with a very low molecular weight. But if they're roughly equal, you know, um, and especially in the case that we have, fluorine and oxygen are very close on the periodic table. One has um, a proton number of eight and one has a proton number of nine. Um, and so they're very, very close in mass number. Uh, so we really cannot uh, identify these based on mass alone. Mass spec is very accurate, but there probably are better ways to identify them from each other. So we'll look at the next two. So column chromatography um, is a type of chromatography where, which means that you're de separating by polarity. Chromatography always means separate by polarity. Any type of chromatography, whether it's gas or and we'll see a couple other ones. Um, so column chromatography, pretty much how it works, if you don't remember, is you have this little um, container, this little tube with these beads in them. They're polar beads, um, so when you pour the liquid into this tube right here, then the liquid will go through and certain um, drops will come down into this little bucket and you collect the bucket over time intervals. So if these are polar, you'll have um, polar molecules sticking to these beads, so non-polar will run out first. So you can you can separate the two by polarity. The non-polar will come out first, and then polar will come out much slower. Um, so that's what we have right there. And TLC. So TLC is kind of a little bit in disguise because they they never really like to say what exactly it is, but it's thin layer chromatography. But they'll a lot of times just say TLC, and so that's why that C you have to remember chromatography. Chromatography is separating by polarity. Um, but, so how this works is, we separate by polarity and we have this same uh, polar gel um, on, the, on the backing. And we have a non-polar, generally we have hexane, generally we have a hexane liquid that will flow up on this little, um, it's like a little piece of paper. So the non-polar molecules will follow this hexane as it goes up into the um, paper and it'll flow up so non-polar will be up here and polar molecules will kind of hang around on the bottom. So we'll see that non-polar will travel farther up and there's something called the RF value. We don't need to worry about that for now but the one thing we just need to know is what we're separating by and we're separating by polarity and polarity here. So a good strategy for the MCAT is to note that if you ever have two things that do the same thing you know that that can't be the right answer. And we also can see that polarity um, really wouldn't affect that much because these both are fairly polar, um, so it would be hard to tell between the two. And so the final one that we're gonna look at is something that's distillation. Um, we're separating by boiling point. And there's um, different types of di distillation, but pretty much how it works um, is we have you know this tube, I think you guys remember it from OCHEM lab, you have your liquid down here, you start boiling it, so you have this little flame going. So that's your little flame, it starts boiling this liquid, so something that has a very low boiling point, so something with a low boiling point, will uh, evaporate first. So if it evaporates first, then it can go travel through a gas and it'll slowly condense as it comes back down and it'll form a liquid once it goes back down here. So we're separating by boiling point. Um, so something with a very high boiling point um, or something, sorry, with a low boiling point will come out first. Um, so how do we distinguish boiling points? Um, so one thing is a high molecular weight generally um, equates to uh, a higher boiling point. Um, just because it's hard to boil something off if it's heavier. Um, but another thing is a high, this one's actually much more important, intermolecular force. Equates to a high boiling point. Okay? 
So now let's think about that. Um, let's look at that situation uh, with our molecules. So we have something like this, and we have something like this. So one thing to note is that um, the, the molecular weight is not, is not really much different, um, and we remember that from the mass spec. Um, so let's look at their inter intermolecular force. Um, and so the one thing to note is that this is the O and the H, okay? So when we have something like this, because remember, none of these are singular. You never will have one molecule just all by itself. We can do something like this. Um, this is called hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding is the, the strongest of the, um, the weak intermolecular forces. Um, so you have van der Waals, you have hydrogen bonding, you have ions, um, things like that. Um, and hydrogen bonding is one of the strongest. So whenever you see an O and an H, that will dramatically increase um, your intermolecular forces. Um, which will then uh, increase increase the boiling point, right? So when we're increasing the hydrogen bonds, we increase the intermolecular forces, which increases the boiling point. Um, and we see in this fluorine, there really are not that many intermolecular forces. Uh, fluorine is not very large either. Um, so we really wouldn't see that much van der Waals uh, forces in there. So knowing that, knowing that we have you know very different boiling points, um, we can kind of figure out what our answer is going to be uh, because there's a very big difference um, in intermolecular force that would have a very different effect on the boiling point which would make it a lot easier to um, distinguish two things by distillation. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.